Hey guys, Gabi from UiPath Hacks here. Today's video is about one of the most awaited new features of the UiPath platform, the UiPath apps. This brings the bot user interaction to the next level, allowing for much more convenient human in the loop processes, cockpits or dashboards that allows the user to interact with the bots and very quickly and conveniently view and interact with the data. UiPath apps offers basically a front-end for the robots running in the back-end. I will showcase the first simple app I built myself that allows the user to interact with a more complex process for invoice processing, and while doing that, I will explain some of the main basic concepts. So I'll show you today the very first app I built with UiPath apps myself. I've imagined it as being part of a larger RPA automation of processing invoices. This simple app is meant to allow the user to review and correct the data, the faulty data coming from the OCR engine that is basically scanning the invoices and recognizing the characters. And if there's any wrong data, then that particular invoice will be rejected from posting and it should be reviewed by a human. And I focused on functionality here. I will address proper design in a future video, so excuse the hideous appearance of the app. So I mentioned front-end. The UiPath app is basically the front-end for the user, and in the back-end there are some bots running. And for this example, I have three very, very simple bots. The first one is a dispatcher creating queue items, simulating basically the OCR software. So every time I run this small bot, I'm adding three queue items to this wrong invoice data queue. And as data, I have just the supplier name, a price, the currency, and the error message that would normally come from the, let's say, um, ERP system when it is trying to post the invoice receipt and failing. So I've just imagined some error messages here. I'm just running this bot to create queue items. So let's do it quickly now. Let's run it once to have some data to play with. And if we look now on the queue, on the wrong invoice data queue, I should have three new items. And here they are. And I will try to move the item once it's corrected by the human via the app, I'll move it to this corrected invoice data queue. All right, so the first bot was just a dispatcher to create data to simulate the larger process. Now, the second bot is basically pulling one item from the wrong invoice data queue. It's assigning its content to these arguments, input output arguments. I have four arguments, supplier name, price, currency and error message. They are all defined here as input output. And I'm just logging them just for debugging purposes. But basically I will use these arguments in my UiPath app to display the data here and allow the user to modify it and later on submit the data. So once I'm clicking this button, I'm calling basically this bot number two which is pulling data from the queue and displaying it here. And bot number three is for submitting the data. It will take the fresh data or the new data entered by the user here. And the third bot is basically adding a queue item now in the other queue, the corrected invoice data queue. And here I'm adding just the supplier, the price, the currency. I don't need to add the error message anymore. And I'm also uh, signing a feedback uh, item submitted successfully just to show it on screen back to the user that uh, his action was successful. Now again, this is not very, this doesn't look very nice, but it's working. And this is what I wanted to focus on, on my, as my first app, just to be able to interact with the bots, to display data, to modify it and send it back 
to a, to a bot in the backend. All right, so we have three buttons. The first one calls the dispatcher, creates data. Second one calls the second bot, displays data here on screen for the user, allowing the user to modify it. And the third button calls the third bot, which considers this new data and then creates a new Q item. So let's see how all of this works. Um, we have on the left hand side here our app. This is our app name. App name. We can add here uh, new pages. I have, one, I have now just one page here. It's a very, very simple app. We can add the process. So basically I've added my three back end bots as processes here and control. We will look into details at the interface in a next video. But for now, I'm just explaining quickly what I did. So I have here all the elements on my page. These are all the elements here. And I have the processes that I've added, the dispatcher, performer, and submit item, the three processes we've just seen. And then when I select different um, elements on the page, I have here their properties on the right-hand side, and I can add new controls. Uh, control is um, either an input, um, like these text boxes here, for example, or uh, containers, like for the whole page, or elements, small elements on the page to make it look nicer. Display, for example, these, uh, these labels are displays, and of course the buttons as well. So um, what we have here is a header, this is a header, we can see it here. And I've called it, um, I've called it invoice corrector. This is the, basically the header of the app. Then I have this button for scan more invoices. I have the text here, I have the description, scan more invoices. I've modified the description as well because I wanna see it and quickly identify it in the left-hand panel. This comes very useful when there are a lot of elements and some of them might be hidden or very small. You can select them from here. And what's interesting here is the event. So you can create rules, especially for buttons, but not only. You can create rules and um, I've done it already. So I'll just click on edit to see what I had here. So my rule when the user clicks this button is it starts a process, this process, apps dispatcher that I've already built in backend. And uh, I have no input override, I have no when completed. So basically it just starts a process and does nothing else on the screen. We will see for the next button that uh, we have more rules here. Okay. So when I click the first button, um, the scan more invoices, this calls the first process defined backend, which just adds Q items and nothing else happens on the apps screen. So this is a very simple button, very simple action. Now the get next item button has a more complex um, rule definition. It starts again uh, the second process, the apps performer, and this one, when completed, it basically sets values for different fields. So the supplier input field gets the value of the argument IO string supplier name the price input field in the app. So this is the app field, and this is the argument of the backend process. So I get the price from the argument, I get the currency from the argument, and I get the error message input from the argument. So what will happen is these four fields will get the values of the arguments of this bot here. These four, and these four arguments they get the values from the Q item, which has been read just at the beginning of the workflow. All right, and then let's look at the third button, the submit data button. We look at the rule. It calls, uh, this is the third process, which just um, creates the Q item. And before it does that, it overrides the input of the arguments of that bot. So. Basically, on this third process, on this third button, I want to look first what values do I have here because the user might have modified any of them and then run my third bot with these values rather than the default values of the arguments. So 
going back here, edit rule, I have my process, and then on the input override here, I can say the argument, this argument in string super name of this um, bot gets the value, whatever value is in the supplier input field on the main page of the app. And the price is um, copied over from there and the currency is taken over as well from the currency input field of the app. And then um, all these other things are empty here. Uh, no, so also when completed. So basically after I've clicked the submit button and the process running in the backend, this one has finished, then I'm showing whatever message I generated with the bot in this submit feedback item on the app. All right, so we've looked at the header, at the items. Um, this one here is just a label. So this is a uh, static, uh, nothing special happens here. There's no event. Um, I can also create an event to update its value if I need to, but I don't need to. I plan that these stay as they are. And then these are text boxes. Again, they have here the, the name um, and in the value binding, I'm showing the value of the argument of this IO string super name argument from this process, from this bot. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that when you define your arguments in the backend process, it's important to understand the direction. So we have here in our um, bot, the arguments and the direction. I've selected them in out for this example, because from the bot's point of view, whatever is coming from the outside to the bot, from a different process or from an app in this case, is going to be considered as being in. But if I want to pass it out as well to the app back, it has to be um, an out argument as well. So then I have to have both directions in out. If I want to um, send an argument to the app and to receive it back. Um, if I'm just sending out arguments to the app and never expect to get them back, then I can use out here. Uh, but it's important to understand the point of view. So from the from from studio, from the bot, from from the backend process, whatever uh, comes in to my process is in, and whatever goes out is out. But from the app's point of view, it's exactly the other way around. Here, whatever um, is coming from a backend process as an out argument, there it is an in argument from for the app. And whatever I want to send from here to backend process, it's an out argument here, and should be defined as an in argument there. So um, if you sometimes are confused what direction um, you, should, uh, you should get for your arguments, uh, you can just use in out. What happens if you, if, you in, if you use the wrong direction? For example, the field will not get updated as you expect to from, from the backend process. And then just look at your arguments direction and uh, just use in out if you're, if you're not uh, too sure. But just consider the point of view. If you are in the app, whatever is going out is out. Uh, and the same thing from the backend processes point of view, that, that is basically an in argument. So let's look at the app running now. I have two buttons here. I have preview and I have publish. If I click on, I, it, it's already published, so I can't publish it again. But basically what happens when you publish it is um, it updates the status here, it's published. And you get a link that could be used by everybody that has access to orchestrator. So anybody who has access to orchestrator can basically access this, this app um, and work with it. Uh, so you can use the copy URL here and send it uh, over to whoever uh, wants to use this app. But for now, let's just see it and run it. So we have already scanned for more invoices. We have some items on our wrong invoice data queue here, three new items. It means we can go ahead and play with the app. So I can click the get next item button. Now the second bot runs and it has displayed here the data from the queue. The error message is price is not a number. Uh, that's because here uh, we have an S instead of a five probably. In a nicer app we will have also here the invoice displayed so we can uh, view the data on the invoice and correct it. So I've made a correction here and I'm submitting the data. And now what's happening, the third bot has run and I get back the message that item has been submitted successfully. And um, I can go now to the queues just to confirm. 
and I have here the um, collected invoice data, view transaction, I have a new item, and here's my price with a 5 instead of an S. So that's it. And then basically um, in my imagined process, the user would just get the next item here. This message should have disappeared ideally and then show it again when I click it again. Um, but I just wanted to, to get the functionality here on the first step, get data from a queue, for example, via one process, edit the data and then submit it. I find this to be a very quickly built, a powerful app for a user to interact with queue data and just allow basically us to very quickly build a human in the loop functionality. Uh, this is quite, quite powerful, I'd say. All right, uh, that's it. Pretty simple and straightforward to build an app to make it interact with your bots. I hope this video will motivate you to go ahead and try them out for yourself. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button to make sure that you get notified of future UiPath videos. And to support my channel, please also subscribe. Thank you for watching and have a great day.